What is exit do? Oh, oops. Huh? Oh, oh, there's a side story. Oh, that's how you do the things. Doki Doki, let's go! Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I accidentally found out how to access the bonus stories, but we're gonna do that after the main game. So now we're here, it's time to write a poem. Let's see. Uh... Alright, um... Alright, uh... What is hair? Um... Special? No. Yeah, that's an obvious one. Uh... Strawberry. Candy. Um, defeat. Oh, dang it. Lollipop. Uh, what? How is that Suki swimsuit? I don't get that. Uh, sugar. Oh my god. Bubbles. Okay, I was like, uh, sweet. No. Bounce. Boop. <laughs> Hurt. Nope. Oh my god. Playground. Mouse. Kitty. Parfait. Yeah, yeah. I hope I got it right. I'm resetting if it's not the Natsuki route. <laughs> Hi again, Geronimo. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha ha ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Geronimo. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Sayori told me he didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between, say, Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Geronimo always gives his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. So, Yori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Geronimo can become good friends, too. Um, Sayori? Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation you just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? But wait, Sayori. Uh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? <laughs> Never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Eh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I was just thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. I'm like bouncing up and down while I'm standing, because I'm standing right now, and I just keep like bopping to the music. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place, so any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. <laughs> Let you just- I've- I've- just a bunch of Game Grumps clips are playing in my head every time I'm reading this, and I just imagine she just pulls out Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> and we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. Th this is- how is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So Yuri and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she is waiting for the chance. I'm talking in my voice. It's supposed to speak in narrative. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Ah! I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh within the closet. She seems to be annoyed at by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Here we go. You looking for something? Freaking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. 
What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Now, Katsuki slides a bunch of half-stacked books on the boxes across the shelf. Manga. <laughs> you read manga, right? Uh, sometimes. Manga is one of those things you, where you can't admit you're really into it and, until you figure out where the other person stands. How did you know anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of, me, of the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better! Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box that she's- <laughs> Oh my god. I get a closer look at the box that she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic, or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you could go do it through the glass of that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything! It was a tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Geronimo. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover! <laughs> in fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm gonna show you exactly why! She shoves the book right into my hands. Ah! I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire, striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly mo. Don't just stand there. <laughs> oh, uh! <laughs> Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the window sills. She pats on the ground next to her, signing, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Uh, why is that? Uh, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. D don't just say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. I took you crosses her arms and scooches an inch away from me. Sorry, I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not, so, not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes, after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh... I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. It looks like it's a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. Kind of grew out of these, since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. So, what should I expect from this? Is there going to be a plot? Well, obviously! You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean... Well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. But there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with the guy at the ice cream shop. That just helps you to get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining, but later on there's all kinds of drama. Like when they get in all their backstories and when some- What? I'm reading so much stuff so fast. <laughs> and when some of the romance starts to happen, that's really what it makes it so good. There are so many touching parts. Ah, is that so? Sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait! What's that supposed to mean? Oh, uh? Natsuki gives me a little shove. I just meant that I haven't seen you at your full power. Hmm, <laughs> good save. Ah, this chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well, Natsuki pauses for a moment, as if she didn't want to admit something. Yeah. Why does that matter? It doesn't. I was just curious. Oh, I'm just, why am I talking in a narrator voice? That's not my guy's voice! Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's just a coincidence. I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got this manga. Like I would ever get into anything because it's in manga. I feel bad for anyone that, <laughs> that impressionable. Ahaha. <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Oh. We read on for a few more minutes. I've finished a couple chapters at this point. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I already get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Hmm? You don't? Um, that's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. 
Oh, you don't have any mango. That's a shame. Why don't you borrow some from all the friends you have? <laughs> oh, I love Game Grumps. They're so funny. <laughs> ah, sorry. Hmm. Like, I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up without them being all like, Eh, you still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. That's why I have great friends, guys. I have, I have friends. <laughs> I'm already kind of a loser, so, hey, where's that self-confidence? <laughs> so I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time, but it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I can't- I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? So? Haha. <laughs> Jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flipped the page. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. Laughter. I totally forgot that happens. Natsuki puts her finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Uh... I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usually bossy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in the words. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone with the bro. Being able to provide that to Natsuki, for whom it's a rare experience, the thought makes me smile a little to myself. Okay, everyone. Eh? Are you all ready with today's poems? Oh come on! Could your timing be any worse? S sorry. I just need to make sure we have enough time. Though you do look pretty cozy over there. Haha. <laughs> eh? Ah! Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. <laughs> I just pictured that so well. Alright, guess I'll stop here for now. Close the book and hand it towards Natsuki. You're just giving it back? Don't you want to know what happens? Uh, yeah, but... Monica just said, don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Eh? Is that really alright? I say that mostly because I really didn't plan on using my spare time to read this. Well, of course. It would take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish the one before tomorrow, and so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, okay. By tomorrow? I only got part way through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. Bruh! I don't even watch shows. <laughs> but I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face. Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? Alright then. I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? It, yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that I have everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? It can't be- Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf paper torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where she I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I share? Who should I show my poem to first? Starting from the bottom, now we. <laughs> I should start with Monica. Yesterday she seems eager to read my poem, and I want her to know I'm putting in effort. Hi, Geronimo. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever hear any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ahaha, <laughs> don't worry, Geronimo. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll learn, all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I had Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. I like it, Geronimo. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. Oh, that means I got the 40 points. Let's go. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. There are a lot of poems of stories out there that are no more than a few simple words. Is that why I only get to pick 20 words? <laughs> 
They can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. It might even feel like they're written for kids. But if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little biased, a little bit biased towards their own kind of right of styles. But I'll always help you find it was a little bit. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Aha. Aha. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in the wall, it couldn't have- Oh, I, I hate actual written stuff. Okay, here we go. It couldn't have been me. See the direction of- I'm, I see- Hold on, I should probably explain that. I don't like reading like written stuff because I feel like I sometimes can't read words. So, here we go. Hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes? A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel. Blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas. Already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, the kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting an emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of em epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. Oh, I just realized what she means by that. <laughs> I'm on to you. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you tried so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your poem, if you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thank you for listening. I think she said thanks for listening, but same thing. All right. Um. Well, sorry from the bottom. <laughs> hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh. S sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um, that's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Me, me, me. Processing thoughts into words. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? Just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Ah, so it's that bad? No. But did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri bruises. <laughs> Yuri buries her face in her hands. I can never notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to the new people. It's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um, it's just that there were specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matters. They form fit the two together. The end result is both the style and the express or weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor- ah, I accidentally pressed A. <laughs> Wait, Jerry finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not that finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. I think we could be a little bit biased though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. 
I'd love to share my thoughts process of behind it. Yuri smiles dreamy, dreamily, <laughs> as if that's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Oh no, okay, my best to read this. Ghost under the light, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time, the last yet to be placed by the sickening blue-green... I don't even know what that is, of the future. I bathe, calming, calm, breath take, bre breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers, flickens, I flicker back. I don't know what I just read. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to, okay, yeah. What? I don't think of that at all. I really had a hard time reading it for some reason. I think it really just was bad, but we're not admitting that to Yuri. But it took you so, Oh, it took me a long time to read. Ah, well, I just don't read the script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh, that's a relief. Wait, so if I just like, if I just like open that and then just immediately close it again, does she think I read it really fast? She's like, did you even read it? <laughs> also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Nothing easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Geronimo. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experience in their works. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolical compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solid putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Well, uh, I guess we'll save Natsuki for last since the poem was very obviously designated towards her. Um. This is a good poet, you animal. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who could who would be writing poems in his free in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. And that's why it depressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy that you just wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really part of a club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club. <laughs> uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like, you, it's like I said before, Geronimo. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah, and I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that, or then. Yay! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. Hehehe. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed. Making me rub the sleepy from me from my eyes. <laughs> Make me rub the sleepy from my eyes. <laughs> are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above. Sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast! Sayori, this is just a guess, but... Are you waiting until this morning to write this? No, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I, for I forget to do it this night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I said try my best. Ah, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? Sounds just like you. Really? Yeah, especially the last line. I mean, eggs and toast. <laughs> Even though you relate to school? It's a bit, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. <laughs> well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Hehehe, <laughs> this is so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time I won't forget, and I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Gee, I wonder who I should show my poem to next. <laughs>
Okay, let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um... That's a good reread my poem. Never mind, I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Uh, then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could be doing other things. Uh, in fact, I remember how I said I wanted to read your poems. That doesn't sound right. That's what I had in mind when writing this. Oh, okay. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said, uh, well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poems if yours was really bad. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem and maybe go, Ha, well, it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. So, in other words, you're saying you liked it. Eh. Uh, Natsuki retorts and gets caught up in her throat. Uh, you're so... You just... You don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that you don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if that's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Uh, fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can see, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Yeah, I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. <laughs> what? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like this? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice things about the simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into that than I realized. That's what I mean to be a pro. That's what it's meant. Wait, what did she say? That's what it means to be. Yeah, I said that. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her for the last com with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's where I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Atsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poem. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Atsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Did you say some? Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Sonic the Hedgehog here. That's a good dismissively returns to the poem to the desk with one hymn. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? That's... Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmph. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Geronimo did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <laughs> And Geronimo liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. And so he suddenly stands up. Oh, cat fight. Let's go. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, that's not what I, uh, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Geronimo appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? And you're that, are you that full of yourself? I, no. I, if I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, um, is everything, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew so much bigger as soon as Geronimo started showing up. Natsuki. Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This, this doesn't, doesn't involve, involve you. you. I don't like fighting, guys. 
Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Geronimo, she, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have been a problem in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should just jump out at the reader and not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Geronimo. Uh, wait, there is a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Geronimo? Um, well... well how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So, of course, that's going to be... What am I going to say? Help me say it. I'm just kidding. No, um... Uh, well, Natsuki route all the way. Um, Yuri! You're really talented. Uh, w well... But Natsuki has a point. I think that... I rack my brain and attempt to back myself up. I think that conveying feelings with few words can be just as impressive as well. It lets the reader's imagination take over, and Natsuki's poem did a really good job of that. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Aha, uh -huh. shows how much you know. Th that's not... Natsuki, I think that's enough. Huh? Me? But she was so mean to me. Natsuki's voice whines. Look, we have... what we talked about yesterday was right. Writing is a really personal thing, and sharing it can definitely be hard. It looks like we learned that today. Even small criticism can lead to something pretty heated. I glance over my shoulder. Sayori is nodding vigorously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you don't need to feel threatened. You're a great writer, Natsuki. Ah! Natsuki's voice gets caught in surprise. Thanks for noticing. She finally mutters that, barely audible. Yuri. Yuri looks at me dejectedly. With a face that like that, I can't help but feel bad for her as well. I'm sure that Natsuki didn't mean everything she said, so you don't need to feel threatened either. Well? If you say so. Hey! It's not like you need to apologize for me, Geronimo. Sheesh. Natsuki takes a breath. I... The thing about... Uh... Natsuki glances around the room. Would everyone stop staring at me? Unsurprisingly, Natsuki has a harder time with it than she boasted. Say, where Monica look away? Hmm. Anyway. The thing about you... <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Natsuki looks away, avoiding eye contact with anyone. Yeah, you're naturally beautiful, Yuri. Sayori? Uh, I'll go make some tea. Eh, I was trying to help. I'm sure she appreciated it, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. Well, now that we're past that, everyone's read the, each other's poems, right? I hope that it was worthwhile for everyone, especially you, Geronimo. And to be honest, it's a nice change of pace from the lazy, uh, lazing, lazing? I never heard that word. Around we get a little too used to. Uh -huh. My joining the club was responsible for ruining the atmosphere. No, not at all, not at all. There's still time before we go home, so we'll all relax for a bit. Of course, besides chatting, we do a little literature-related things in the club. Maybe, so maybe you could take the chance to pick a book or do some writing. After all, that's what the club is for. I disagree, Monica. Uh, about what? That's not the most important thing about the literature club. The most important thing is having fun. Uh, of course. Well, I guess that's why you're the vice president, Sayori. <laughs> in the end, though, Monica's right. Being in a literature club probably means I can't spend all my time doing nothing. But in the end, I guess it's been worth it so far. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Geronimo, how do you... Oh, frick, wrong voice. <laughs> yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. I keep freaking out my voice. <laughs> and maybe you learn something in your f from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself... I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I could do at least a, do a better job than impressing those who I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Geronimo, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Hehehe. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. Boom! It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Atsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen a fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Geronimo, it's nice that I get to spend time with you at, in the club, but I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. 
<sighs> it looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said this more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. And I believe we're at the poem section. Yep. Ending day two on there. Thank you guys for watching. This has been day two. Next time we're going to do day three. We're still going down the Natsuki route because... <laughs> Natsuki best group. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, leave a like for more Doki Doki Plus and Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, I guess the whole game is called. And uh, subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when the next episode comes out. I'm pretty sure these videos have been fun to make. I can confidently say that. In fact, I'm pretty sure Editor Me is also having fun. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>